All right, what's going on? So what I'm going to do is do the last uh, couple of books that I forgot about and didn't make the cut. So right now we're looking at um, On the Trail of the Assassins. This is what Jim Garrison. So hold on, let me switch this around. Hold on a second. This is um, with Jim Garrison. I think the sound comes out better this way. But <clears throat> So this one, this is an important book. This is a must read because this one comes from the man involved himself. So it can't get any better than that unless he starts embellishing stuff. And uh as you can see, this was another one of the books that inspired the JFK movie. And this whole book and Jim Garrison, there, it was very important with the JFK assassination because as I understand it from reading and everything, once everything kind of subsided with the, the assassination, you know, people, they kill and they hope that people forget about it. Same thing with Malcolm X. They hope that people forget about him. But of course, mystery comes around because people are constantly saying, who killed this person? Who killed that person? When people keep asking the question, even though they presented an assassin, obviously people don't believe the story. <laughs> That's what that means. So Jim Garrison came around. If he had not come around, this guy really pieced it all together. And it helped that he was in the military and he was in the FBI already, so he knew a whole bunch of the schemes and how they operate. That's why you see Jim Garrison in the movie, which they should have gotten somebody else to play him. <laughs> hey, Kevin Costner, I know he was big at the time, but God damn it. He didn't look like Jim Garrison, but <clears throat> you know, Jim Garrison, what was he? The prosecutor, I don't know if it was for Louisiana or New Orleans, but whatever the case is, my man had a high position. So he had a position that you couldn't discredit, but the government still tried to discredit him anyway. See, if he was just a regular conspiracy theorist, as they like to call people, they would have been able to call him a kook. But since he was a DA, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty hard to uh, discredit that guy. And he had the power to subpoena. But people know from reading the books, this book in particular, and I'm sure this is a reprint because it's in paperback. Um, but this book in particular, what they say is, see, 1988. Well, it looks like it's, Yeah, first printing, uh, first printing, 91. Oh, first Warner Books printing, 91. So I guess 88 is when this came out. Oh, uh, this is a Warner Books edition, so it must have taken on the book after it sold. <clears throat> so he tried to subpoena key guys in the assassination, but they hit out in California and Governor Ronald Reagan... Yeah, future president. See, this is why you got to be on the lookout for these guys because these guys are always lying in wait and they're putting these guys ahead and in, in, in line to do whatever it is that they're going to do in the future. But they got to play the game and they got to show that they're loyal. And most of the people involved with killing JFK got hooked up. So the only thing is we don't know if it was just a plain old coup or if JFK either did something that they didn't like or failed to do something that they wanted him to do. All pointers show that he failed to do what they wanted him to do. So they figured we got to take care of this guy. Big undertaking when you say we got to eliminate the president. So with that being said, if it weren't for Jim Garrison... David Ferry, the Clay Shaws, the New Orleans Connection, 
the homosexual connection because yeah, they, I mean that sounded funny at the time, but you can't deny that because Jack Ruby, homosexual, Clay Shaw was a confirmed homosexual. They say Oswald was involved with a little bit of that too. Because it's funny when you see the Oswald autopsy photos, they show a picture of his butt for some odd reason. You know, I've never seen an autopsy photo of somebody's butt. But I guess they wanted to suggest something. So, uh, you would have never heard of them. You would have never heard of the... See, because it was key that Clay Shaw is the director of the trademark. And JFK, before he got killed, he was supposed to have spoken at the Dallas trademark. So you'll see that everything is connected in trademarks. There were fronts, CIA fronts, and other international clandestine fronts. So the CIA, unfortunately, they work for the bankers. They work for the they work for the corporations which are owned by the banks, and are in conjunction with the bankers. That's what you got to understand. So JFK was just the guy in the way they had to get rid of. That's why everybody didn't mind doing it and approved of it. And of course, the mob works with the CIA, or should I say they work for the CIA. And this man proved that. Now, the first Italian mafia just happened to, uh, in this country just happened to have come from New Orleans. A lot of people don't realize that because, you know, you don't think of Italians in the South, but that is one place that they were at. And they used to be in the ghettos too with the black people because Italians used to be racially. And that's what I said, racially discriminated against. And, um, you know, people forget if it weren't for organized crime, they wouldn't be where they are now. And the only reason they're with where they are now is because of the small hats let them because they realized the Italians had pretty good organizations. So they better utilize these people. And that's why you, they always put them out in these movies. The Godfather and all that. You never see small hat Godfather, you know? <laughs> so Jim Garrison, his investigation showed the plot to kill JFK. So you could technically stop right there. But as far as the who and the why, that's where he didn't get answered. They stopped him. And then they try to discredit him, try to say he was a criminal and working with the mob, anything they could. And it was hard to kill the man because, see, I mean, they could have easily killed him, but politically that wouldn't look good because everybody would look guilty. So that's why you can't kill some people. A lowly drug addict witness, you can kill them. Witnesses, no problem. David Ferry, obviously, he got killed. That was Joe Pesci's uh, character. But see, when you see the real photos of the people and their, and, and their deaths, then things look a little different. You know what I mean? <laughs> More real. So that's what happened with that. Matter of fact, let me put this down for a second. Let me show you, show you one uh, film I think I would recommend for you. Hold on a second. <clears throat> now this right here this is a rare dvd yeah i like uh blu-ray or better but this one pretty hard to find so rare movie i don't even think it'll ever come out on blu-ray but if it does that'll be good now this movie as you can see it's called executive action i can't say i've ever seen it on tv and I actually never heard of the movie. I only heard it from reading these books and watching videos and people made mention of this. And what was this, the early 70s or something like that? Yeah, 1973. And uh, Burt Lancaster, I think this is, his, is this his last film or... Maybe it was this Robert Ryan guy who I never heard of. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I think that was his last movie. But this is a movie. And this is by Mark Lane as well. An attorney. My man still was an attorney until he died. And I also believe some slick stuff uh, he was involved in too. But he's a small hat. So 
that explains that. So this movie is a drama based film, but based on real stuff. So the drama part comes into play when they call it a, the, when they reenact the conspiracy part, but it's also uses archival footage. And, uh, this is a good one to get. If you can find it, this might be out of print, but I don't think this was a highly in demand movie, but see my case got messed up. I got to replace the case on that one, but this is one to get one to watch. You want to see a, a visual reenactment, you know, it wasn't that big of a budget, but you know, it is what it is. Oh, you know what? I think this might be the microphone. It's hard to tell with this, this phone has so many damn microphones and holes and stuff. <clears throat> but <clears throat> yeah, this might be this is a film to add to your collection. Shouldn't even cost more than ten dollars unless it's so rare now. So these are things to check out. You know, this movie I actually watch is one of the few DVDs I actually watch a lot of because. It gives you a good essence of uh, what the hell was going on and why. And you can see it play out. So they try to educate you. And there was a scene in here. I try to put on YouTube, but you know how they always block every scene. Where this guy, Robert Ryan, his character, who I think he's supposed to be playing George Bush. They don't really tell you some of these guys. And one guy looks like he's supposed to be... Uh, Alan Dulles <laughs> and um, but they said I read somewhere he was supposed to have been somebody else but he looked like Alan Dulles so <laughs> and he was kind of hesitant on the assassination part but from what everybody said Alan Dulles was one of the p main people insisting upon the, the, the assassination so and, this, and it goes to show you what the mega rich can do when they have all the connections and of course the other Connection is the Freemason connection that people never like to talk about in none of these books. <laughs> that's that's what you got to understand when it comes to this assassination, Freemasonry and the uh, bankers are never discussed. Which is why I look into those areas, because people want to stay away when people don't want to talk about something. You got to wonder why. <laughs> so that's why I start looking into it. So these are things to get. And the final book, which is not here, I can't I still can't find it, but it's called um The Secret Government by David Wise. Now that one is a book, yeah, he's another one of those types, you know. But hey, they control all media. All publishing, most publishing anyway. You could self-publish, but you know how, how often are you gonna find your book in Barnes and Noble? So this is why they—I don't even know if Warner still publishes books or not. I know they started publishing video games lately. Matter of fact, coincidentally, this this movie is Warner Brothers too. <laughs> um, but. They control the media. So when they control it, they can control what gets put out, what gets emphasized, what gets ignored, what gets de-emphasized. And um, the secret government. Matter of fact, I bought another book by David Wise. He had a few. I didn't get to read those yet, but I'm going to check those out in due time. But the secret government, it was written or it came out in the early 60s. And... The reason why people like me, we see these fake police shootings, fake mass shootings, uh, the judge hugging the uh, fake killer. You know, the, we, we recognize these are all stunts because these books, so you can't find these things on YouTube, Google searches. That, that's for the idiot. Idiots say, oh, let me look it up on Google. Oh, I found a page. There it is. This proves my case. No, 
movie or or a snippet from a TV show and you think you got the whole thing on whatever the hell they're talking about. You need a book written by people involved and then you need other books on specific areas of whatever it is you're into to put it all together. For a lot of people, it's like, damn it, I don't have time to read all these books. You know, if that's the case, you don't really have time to really get involved in whatever it is you're trying to get involved in. But the secret government, I probably put the picture up instead of uh, leaving this up. But with the secret government, that book shows you CIA sneaky tactics. Tactics such as dressing up filthy hookers making them look like sophisticated wealthy women and sending them into parties so that they can have sex with people of interest and then pumping them for information or stealing information from them from their homes this is what they do and they do this because you got to keep in mind the CIA they have scientists geneticists, doctors, lawyers, everybody on their side. That's why it's called the secret government, because why do you need all this for intelligence collecting? Clearly, it's more than intelligence collecting. It's for total control. And all you have to do is follow the money. The CIA, like I said, works for the corporations. I know that's hard to believe, but that's the case. That's how they got started. They work for the corporations. And the corporations are either indebted to or owned by the banks. And we know who owns the banks. <laughs> so that's why the buck stops there. That's who you blame, no matter what. So these are the tactics that they use. They know they utilize your weaknesses. If you're on drugs, they spy on you, figure out, okay, this person's on cocaine, heroin. This person's a homosexual. This person likes this type of food. They like these type of cars. They're weak for money. They're weak for this. They look for your weaknesses. Then they exploit it. And it's the same. You got these people you got to combat within your own company, uh, country. And it's, they're supposed to be a part of the government. But yet this is what they do. And a lot of people think it's political entry. They routinely kill people too. Keep that in mind. You know, they do whatever 30 tricks they can pull off. But then when those don't work, they kill. They show how they go into governments like the Trujillo and the Dominican Republic. Uh, what's my man in the Congo? Patrice Lumumba. They even killed a goddamn UN Secretary General because he didn't want to uh, support what they were supporting. And that was a white dude, too. A Swedish guy, I believe. So... A hell of a lot of shit was going on in the 60s, man. You know, it's just outrageous. And I think civil rights and all these other events were probably cover. But the 1960s, that was clearly a revolutionary decade. But if you were from the 60s, and I guess if you were high on drugs, then uh, I guess you weren't concerned with all that. But this is why they keep you looking left, why they go right. You start looking left, they go, they, you start looking right, they go left. So that's why you see all these stunts. A lot of people know the signs. And that's why YouTube took a lot of the videos down because, uh, you know, they tell you about the 33, the nine, the 11 and uh, certain things to look out for. When you see these stories and read about these stories, it's fake news. Donald Trump went and uh, tried to co-op the term fake news so that whenever fake news is real news, He'll call it fake news and then you'll believe it because Donald Trump is supposed to be such a raw, powerful guy. They hype him up and the hate for him is fake. It's just to make him seem more legit. Same thing they did with Obama. It's to make him seem legit. This movie, the, the secret government, the JFK situation, this shows you no matter what happens, Always keep in mind when they really don't like the president, they don't like the person. You see what they did with JFK. That's what happens. There's none of that. Uh, 
let's talk them to death. I'm, you know, I'm sorry, you know what I mean. Let's, let's talk them out of it. Let's talk them into leaving. They did that with Richard Nixon because Richard Nixon, he already was involved in the murder of JFK. So he already knew it was better to back the hell out. Even though he still had something on the CIA. But see, when you let your government get out of order like that, that's what happens. And that's what happens, you know, they were killing people left and right. Their whole thing got exposed in the 60s. That's what that's all about. And again, I, I still say this is why the disco explosion happened in the 70s and the black exploitation happened in, in the 70s because and time is everything, by the way. Time is crucial. Because September 11th, well, let me, before I even go there, let me finish what I was going to say. 60s and 70s, disco, which is fun, black exploitation, which gives black people a different image than they had in the 60s. In the 60s, it was about struggle and being hated on. In the 70s, oh, okay, you got movies, TV shows. You should be happy now, even though most of the movies were about men being pimps, drug dealers, gangsters, and the females being oh. That's all it was about. It was just watching Dolomite. And that's what it was about. So, you know, that's what they do in the 60s. So in the 60s, it was just smoke and mirrors. I'm sorry, that's what they did in the 70s. In the 60s, it was a whole bunch of craziness going on. And they want to take your mind off of that in the 70s. Timing is everything. September 11th, 2001. Why is that significant? Some people say it's the esoteric number stuff. Could be, but like the JFK assassination, let me tell you why they do it so late in the year. And I'm not getting into any numbers, uh, gematria and all that kind of stuff. I'm just telling you from a psychological point of view, September 11th, 9-11, they coined that immediately. So I already knew that was bullshit right there. Because they gave it a title and a nickname. But why September? Keep in mind, we're, we're in October now. But after they, the news, it makes the news and everything. The end of the year is near. So then the next year comes, 2002. Then the news immediately. Have you noticed this in the news? Every time the new year comes and there was an event, they say, Last year, because last year puts it in your mind that that was a year ago, even though it wasn't a year ago. It was only a couple of days ago, <laughs> you know, once the new year came. So that's what they do. It's psychological. And this is the thing with JFK. Uh, he got killed on a Friday. November 22nd, you can you can add and say 9-11. 22nd, 9-11, that's 11. November 22nd times 11. Uh, I'm sorry, 11 times 2, 22. Hey, that's what some people say. Makes sense. But he got killed on a Friday. And what does that have? What is that? What's the significance of that? Courts close on Friday. <laughs> that's, that's the significance. Courts close. So by the time everything pops off, they know Oswald is not going to see. He was arraigned, but that's that's as far as they went. He's not going to see a day in court. All the evidence was designed to be as if a, as if the man was dead and could never address any of the evidence. Everybody, and this is what they do with Bin Laden and everybody else. They start speaking for the dead because they know that the dead can't speak. So they tell you what they were, what the dead was thinking. They tell you what the dead's possible motivations were. And they tell you that the dead was guilty, but the dead, in this case, Oswald said, I didn't do it. Now, he had plenty of time to say, I did it. <laughs> and here's why. And I'll do it again. But he was 24. See, when we were 24, we couldn't comprehend that being young. But you get a little older, and then you're like, okay, yeah, I see that was a young state of mind. You can see he was clearly getting scared as time went on and he realized, God damn it, they left me holding the bag. So he got nervous and he started to crack. And once he started to crack and was trying to, you could tell when he started to crack when he said, I'm just the passy. 
that's when they say, okay, we can't put this man before the camera again because he might say the wrong thing next time. He already said he's a patsy. That, and that already came close to giving something away. So he's like, okay, don't put this man before the camera anymore. But they had to parade him before the camera to begin with because they needed the public to see this man, to hear this man, and say, that's the man who killed the president. But of course, he wasn't. <laughs> he was just a young guy surrounded by older guys. And older guys controlled, because you notice everybody in his life was a whole lot older. So he was easy to be manipulated because he's trying to prove himself. So easy to manipulate the guy. And they had to sacrifice him. They didn't mind killing him because you, you take a president out. Then they killed a whole bunch of witnesses. So the CIA, this is what they do, psychological. So the president gets killed on a Friday. Oswald doesn't survive the weekend. So by the time Monday comes around, nobody's going to court. The case is technically open and shut. <laughs> That's why it was planned the way they planned it. They wouldn't have done it if it had been on a Monday. Because then you got time to better investigate things and bring it into court. And November 22nd. What's up next? Thanksgiving. See, everything is planned to try and take people's minds off of things, even though people's minds were still on it. But Thanksgiving comes up. So people are dealing with that. Then Christmas, people are dealing with that. Supposed to be happy times, right? And then what happens after that? By the time the next year comes along, it's a new year. So now the news media once again says, last year, President Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas. And then what happens after that? To bring you good times, just like they did with the 70s. The Beatles come to America. And that's a big sensation. And that further takes your mind off of that, except for the people who are into that. So this is what they do. It's all psychological. And they even said that the Beatles at the airport. Matter of fact, if you look at the video footage from the Beatles when they came to the airport, I think it was in New York. And because uh, I think they were going to the Ed Sullivan show. If you look at the footage, you will see that the people were indeed not really packed like that. But the, the, the camera angles, you know, it's the same kind of way that when you watch a movie, they make Tom Cruise look like he's taller than what he is. But the camera angles, they were filming the people in a way that made it look so crowded. But apparently they said that the Beatles weren't really known like that, but they had to hype it up to make it look like the next big thing to take your mind off the JFK assassination. And don't count the British out being involved in that either, by the way. You see all these stunts seem to be cold stunts. And some of these people, you know, you got a lot of traitors out here too. So I'm surprised, I wouldn't be shocked if a lot of them were helping the British out. But um, I know people think, oh man, the British are weaker. No, no, no. Better look at all their jump off points around the world. They're not weak. They're just smarter. That's what they are. They ain't take over the fucking world from being stupid now. <laughs> so that's the one thing they seem to do better than anybody else around now. But uh, it's take people's countries. But you look at it because I looked at the footage when the Beatles arrived. And I'm like, damn, yeah, there are some spots on the fence where it's like, OK, they're all covering the fence, but there's nobody behind these people. <laughs> But the camera angles make it look like it's a sensation. And then they said they got the Ed Sullivan show because Ed Sullivan was obviously the number one show of that type. And they had people go crazy. And then obviously, as you know, when people are going crazy over something, even if people don't like it, they're like, man, what is this? Man, I got to get in on this. If they hype it up saying, oh, man, the Beatles going to be on TV, the sensation of the world. You're going to be like, the who? And then they get their songs played. Not to say that they didn't have good songs. They did have some great songs, but it takes the marketing machine. Some people call it the Illuminati. It takes that machine to put them out. And the proof of this 
is when you look at the Kardashians, because that's what I always said. I said, if you can take anybody without a name, no talent, and just put them out there and people keep talking about them, you can turn them into a superstar and no talent. Kardashians, that's a prime example of doing that. And I'm not trying to be funny with that. I'm just saying that's the prime example of taking people with no particular talent and making them famous. All you have to do is keep talking about them, give them some money to make them look like superstars. And then they're famous, famous for nothing. People think it's because of a porno, but it's for nothing. It's really because of that OJ Simpson thing. People forget about that. or don't know about that. Now, how come OJ got out of jail with a, in a Bentley SUV. I ain't trying to go in there, but I'm, I'm just trying to say. But the CIA, they do a whole bunch of dirty tricks and they own so much of the media and reporters. It's not funny. And they have so many dummy companies at, in, a, in a neighborhood near you. Stuff that is so unassuming that you're not thinking about it but they're open for business places. That's why you got to look at places that's open for business, but you're looking at them. You're like, damn, I don't see any business taking place. And a lot of the mob uh, front businesses work with the CIA. Really the CIA, they pimp the mob though. Mob, they don't really have any choice, but to do what the CIA tells them to do or They're going to be out of business. So, that's how the corporations work with the CIA and with the mob. And again, that key scene in Scarface where um, they introduced Tony Montana to that white dude. That white dude was in the CIA. They were trying to bring Scarface in. And then he didn't want to blow up that uh, snitch in New York because he said the kid, he didn't want to kill the kid. That's where he fucked up. See, those are the things in movies, small scenes that the average person is not going to get. That's why you got to read and then you understand, okay, this is what I'm saying. Like when I saw, saw Scarface way back in the day, I'm just thinking, okay, it's about a drug dealer on the rise. You know, I got the money laundering guy with the bank manager. I got all that. But that scene, <laughs> uh, once he became the man, I didn't get that scene. It was only after reading all these books and everything else about the CIA and how they operate. And I said, okay, I get it. See, Oliver Stone, he already knew about all this. So <clears throat> this is why he put it in the movie, but he didn't, he made it subtle. Very subtle. That's why they didn't really emphasize who the man was. But you notice that the, you could tell who the man was because the man wasn't afraid of, I forgot the, the main guy. I forgot his name. And uh, you know, the, the main drug dealer from Bolivia. Keep in mind that guy was gay in real life too. I'm just pointing that out. <laughs> Cause I found that out. I was kind of shocked. But um You notice how he didn't give a damn about one of these people. He seemed like he was the man in control. So this is why you gotta pay attention. The secret government by David Wise. It's a whole lot more I could tell you on that, but it's a cheap book. You can go and find it. Abe Books, A B E B O O K S dot com. That's a good place to find a whole ton of books for next to nothing. Deliver it for next to nothing. And um, I got to buy another copy because I don't know. I, I just can't find this around here. But they tell you about everything that you did know or thought the CIA did or didn't know that they did is in that book. And then you'll be so shocked that you'll say to yourself, God damn it. Now I see why people like me dismiss certain events that's out in the public as fake because you can see it coming. It's the same MO. They haven't changed the damn thing. The only thing they did was put it on social media. And because that makes it seem like it's more real. That's all they did. All fake. So I'm going to end it right there. This is the final part in the must-read books. And I'm throwing in that executive action as a must-see movie.